Hi there guys and welcome to another Train Sim 2017 video. Today we're back on the West Coast Mainline North because I know that's a favourite route of many of you out there, including myself. It's one of my favourites. Uh, we are taking a 390 in an Armstrong Powerhouse scenario from here at Preston up to Carlisle. Hello driver, first things first, load and unload passengers, done. Here at Preston we booked to depart 1541. You will then call at Oxenholm, Penrith and Carlisle. The only thing of note today is that there is a 80 mile an hour temporary speed restriction in place just north of Plumpton on the down main. Just to catch me out, enjoy. So this is from the Ultra Powerhouse 35 pack, it's the scenario pack. It's not actually available anymore because it was caught up in all the Virgin thing. Um, for those of you that are going to ask to know there will be included in the AP packs now is an unbranded version of the 390. But if you go and download Horgie's Reskin, which is available on UKTS uh, and DPS, I think, you will be able to just copy the Virgin Trains folder back into the Virgin Trains folder that's already there, and that'll give you the branding back. Just remember, every time you up you uh, install an extra stock pack that includes this from Armstrong Powerhouse, it will replace it with the unbranded version. Uh, so let's get going. There's not much to set up in the cab on the 390. It's one of those trains that's desperately due for an upgrade. But there's just no sort of word on it yet. And my hunch was that it would be this that would be included in the Train Sim World, the next Train Sim World pack. But we got the Great Western instead. I would have quite liked to have seen a, a Pendolino. They're not my favourite stock of any way, shape or form, but they have a place. And they do a job pretty well. Uh, there is a signal button on this. It's getting a bit long in the tooth. Not much works in it at all, really. I think you basically have lights. Uh, do you even have a light switch? Probably. Somewhere. Yes, it's up here that works. It's weird because the indicator's over here, but the switch is up there. Uh, not even the DRA works in this thing, but it's it's just, it does look good from the outside. The model's good. Is it? Is it? Am I right in saying it is the only tilting train in? No, there's the ice that tilts, isn't there? There's the ice tilt. One day I'd love to see the APTP included in uh, in train sim. I know there was one. There is one actually half developed, three quarters developed, but that was back at the railworks days. It's been a long time since I've heard anything about it. So. Uh, I'm not holding up hope to see that anytime soon. This weekend past has actually just been the Crew Heritage Centre's anniversary. And uh, I was desperate to get up and see the APTP, but I just didn't get a chance. I have got plans to go up and see it and do some video in. Um, but it's a little way off yet. The guy that's the well, the guys that are looking after it have done an amazing job. It's just had a repaint, it looks stunning. And they even actually tilted it. Well, one driving trailer of it, which was really nice. So this should be a fairly straightforward run. Uh, due to the, the scenario pack no longer being available and I didn't have the extra stock pack downloaded uh, on the CD that I had this on, um, I've had to swap out a few bits and pieces. For some reason one of the Freightliner 66s wasn't working and uh, Colas 47 which I think is one of the ones that's available on Marley Man's website but I couldn't log into that this morning for some reason it was just timing out on me one feature to say this train does have is a speed set a speed hold uh, it's not the most reliable thing in the world but we will be using it for for a while on the route
it's an odd thing the 390 really because lots of people have done like uh, patches and fixes for all sorts of other locomotives uh, physics patches sound patches the, the 150-1 was the probably the true test of them lots of people did well I think it was actually was it I can't remember who actually made it but there was a physics patch and a sound patch for that I'd like to see something like that done for this really so that's me just turned the speed set on at 107 that should hold me about 110 uh, as long as the gradient's flat if I start going down any gradient I will need to reduce power the speed set button's controlled by the C key and it's also here and it is actually a usable button as I say this what was the description on that This is used to map the cylinder cock key to speed set. There you go. If I remember rightly, this was done by a guy called Ben Laws originally, who did, I think it was the class 91 and Mark 4 set for train simulator. Microsoft train simulator, not. not um. This version of train simulator. And this modelling spot on really. And it's a lovely thing to look at. It's nice to see it speed through the countryside. Oh, we can go one two five. That's because we can use the EPS speedboards as we're a tilt locomotive. West Coast Main Line uh, was due to be 140 miles per hour route in the West Coast Mainline modernisation scheme, but that was scrapped relatively early on in the upgrades process. Uh, so they made it as much as they could, 125 mile an hour. And that's done, uh, done by Enhanced Permittable Speeds, which are EPS boards, they're the yellow ones. There is a little knack with the speed hold on this. You're going to have to learn to use it yourself. It's not, it's not like the the 91 or the 90 where you can just sort of click it and it does it. And the horn's awful. So the West Coast Mainline over Shapbury was modelled with um, active neutral sections, but the Pendolino doesn't actually support them, hasn't got the scripting involved in supporting the neutral sections. I think this was the first route to have it as well. This is it here. I should really power down. One thing this train does have that's nice as well is this passenger view. Now I always say I'm not a fan of passenger views but they are growing on me and this one is, is nice. Can't moan about it at all. Those of you that have ever been on Pendolinos will know they're not the nicest things to travel in. Um, I quite enjoy the ride of them, don't get me wrong, but they do feel quite cramped inside. Uh, the small windows. Uh, a lot of the seats don't line up to windows as well, which is quite annoying. First class they tend to. And I'm not sure if these have had an upgrade to the first class section or not yet. I know uh, the Mark IV sets have got the new leather seats, which I'm sort of meh about really. I've only travelled on them with the new leather seats twice. Uh, I'm actually travelling back from Newcastle this Sunday, um, first class, so I will get another little test of them.
I'm suffering some quite large lag spikes in many routes at the minute. This route's doing it more than a few others. So I'm up, I've got my frame limit set at 30, uh, just for video recording purposes, really more length than else. Um, but even then I'm still getting sort of quite large lag spikes down to 15. It seems to be when it's loading a new tile. Uh, I know uh, Train Sim itself doesn't like having a massive Railworks folder, so it could be to do with that. I've got an awful lot of stock involved in, in, uh, installed at the minute. I try and keep things that I won't use uninstalled, so quite a lot of the German routes, um, unless they're needed. I know the, there's a couple of freeware routes that require some of the German assets. And with the vegetation packs, some of the vegetation track upgrade packs I use, some of those use some of the German tracks. So it's one or two installed. Uh, I've got no US routes installed whatsoever, or the stock. But it's very hard going through and deciding what you have installed and what you don't have installed. I went through a phase of just basically installing all I was going to run. And then I was finding that I was literally having to go back and change folders about adding geos for things, all that sort of thing. So it wasn't as much as it gave me slightly better performance. The pros did not outweigh the cons whatsoever. It's just grief, absolute grief. In my um, 156 video, I could get the headlights to work. And uh, Albie, who's the guy that's super Alps, had come on and said I'd copied the wrong geos over again. And I haven't actually been to check, but I probably have. But as a lot of you know, and I have said plenty of times before, geos are the bane of my life. What is that floating in the air over there? Oh, it's a crane. Cool. And even, even the installers, so a lot of the DPS stuff is now coming with installers to do the geo work for you. And as much as some of them are brilliant, others don't, I still end up having to go and manually do it. There's so many variations I think you could have with how you have train sim installed. Um, different drives, all that sort of thing. The installers have got to be pretty robustly designed. Uh, I'm actually, doing a little bit of testing for a upcoming reskin pack and there's a lot that goes with it and I got the pack the other day with an installer and bang the installer didn't work <coughs> it's got a fair bit of break on here That's one of the reskins that I uh, changed over for this set. This is the BH reskins class 60. 60074. Oh, I'm still. Um, those of you who know on my YouTube channel, that's actually my uh, thumbnail picture. For my account, it's one of my favourite liveries that 60's been in which I've said before. So I have a lot of favourites of things, don't I? And that's alright, you can have a lot of favourites. I see quite big stutters going on, it's quite irritating. Don't know how it'll come out in the video, to be fair, it should look, probably, it might look alright in the video.
I love that little bit just leaving that station there because it's like um, if any of you ever paid BVE there was the network West Midlands and was it Maybank station you pulled out of you went over the bridge reminds me of that Actually, see the tilt um, right now coming up. There we go. The Pendolino's grown on me. I mean, when these first came out, I was no fan of them whatsoever. but they have grown on me. I think any t train that tilts is pretty damn cool. I mean, this is the, the Pendolino itself is British engineering, sold to the Italians, sold back to Britain. I've said it before as well, the APTP project is one of my favourite periods and projects that British Rail ever undertook. Uh, very, very clever system. Trying things that had never been tried before. Crossing over between aircraft engineering and rail engineering, which had never happened before either. Oh, I could be doing 125, I'm just going up to 110, so I'll stick at 110 probably running a little bit late yeah, I'm about a minute down um, it was a really good project a lot of mismanagement but it worked And it wasn't mismanagement, mismanagement, I don't think, at the British Rail level either. It, there was a lot of underfunding of the project. Um, if you think the other things were going on around the same time with the APT and things like that, Concord had had billions of funding thrown at it. APT project had minimal funding for what they got done. It was very well. British Railways would look quite different nowadays. I mean, the British Rail network would look... Uh, quite different nowadays I think if the APTP had been put into service and then the, the production ones as well even after the well even with the class 91 projects the 2C5 or Project Electra the Mark IV coaches were designed to have tilt mechanisms fitted their body profile allows for tilt mechanisms to be fitted the class 91s before their overhaul had tilt inverters still fitted in them for controlling the tilt system Uh, the Class 93, which was the proposed Intercity 250 project, which was the replacement for the West Coast Main Line as well, that had tilt in stock as well. It just suits the British Railways. I mean, we can't relay swathes of track as much as they're going to with high speed 2 um, it would be a, would have been a darn sight cheaper if they had just invested in tilt and technology properly
So the record for a uh, Pendolino is actually 145 miles an hour. That's what they've been driven up to in this country. That's an official record. So the other odd link when I was saying about how it was British engineering that then went to Italy and then came back to Britain, it was also the tilting technology in the Pendolino in theory was started by SIG, who are a Swiss company who actually made the bogeys for the Mark IVs. So that's where the link to the Mark IVs comes in again as well. Uh, they're now part of Alstom. And it's uh, electromechanical actuators are used. There's two per car. And like, so when these tilt into a corner, the maximum they can tilt is eight degrees from centre either side, which is quite cool. And the reason they used electromechanical systems over the so Fiat quite often used uh, hydraulic tilt and actuators. The electrical mechanical system is basically lower maintenance cost and slightly more efficient. Oh, 115. Five. Got to not get caught out. Um, so, don't read the HUD, basically, when you're driving this thing. Don't try and listen to the clicks either, but the off position is actually 33%. So you've got 50, 68, 84, 100. And I don't think the brake is stepped, but we'll have a look at that in a second. One thing I do quite like on the, the Pendolino, and Virgin, um, Chini R sort of did it with a buffet as well, is that the the buffet on a Pendolino isn't really a buffet, it's like a shop. I quite like it, you're not sort of asking for things from behind the counter, you can sort of pick them up off the shelf yourself. Quite a weird thought there, something I don't know. If you guys can answer it, give us a shout. When you go through a neutral section and you're in something that has regenerative braking, which is putting power back to the wires, not just to, to a resistor bank, what happens when you go through a neutral section? Do you have to come off the brakes or does the um, regen system actually stop? working for the time it's going through the neutral section? Ooh, there's a question I'll have to ask. I'm coming in really fast.
and very light. Not terrible from the stop board there. Now, a word of advice when driving the, the 390 on anything but a standard scenario. So if you do a career scenario, I don't know if they fixed this because I haven't actually tried it. But what used to happen quite a lot was that the... You know where it says, oh, you've exceeded yada, 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 force and all this. Excessive force, passenger comfort levels. That's the thing. It used to have them going around curves. So you literally couldn't complete a, pa a career scenario without driving like Miss Daisy. I'd like to get my hands on a Pendolino manual. Uh, the 156s I've swapped in as well. For some reason, on with the Armstrong Powerhouse one, they'd used the it's a little sign. So poor adhesion site. Cool. See, this is the sort of little details that I love. And uh, here we can check out the extension. This is the route I drove down the other day. Um, so I was wondering how far it went. Mm, track seems to be there pretty well. This isn't, don't think uses the extension route. I think that is actually a separate route. Have I missed it? Have I gone too far or is it pulling out still? Oh, it's here. So the EPS board's at the bottom there, so this is what I was talking about earlier. So, standard stock, 90, EPS, as with most modern stock these days the um, maintenance well heavy maintenance of these things is all done at one central position and that is the long site depot Manchester there are other depots that can deal with them so Paul Maddy um, I didn't click that fast enough see uh, Wembley where else does them uh, is it Edge Hill at Liverpool? I think does some of the. So that's lighter maintenance. So A exams and things, and then uh, like cleaning. A bit like heating for the 91s.
So I've just got some um, figures. So the wider window pillars I was talking about in the in the uh, passenger view I mean that in some standard class carriages 22.5% of the seats are parallel with either no window or a limited portion and that sort of brings me on to my next thing so grey rig disaster so these things are built like tanks I think we can safely say that uh, they are very well built And this was tested in October 2004. Oh, no, no, it wasn't October 2004. That was the Liverpool one. It was February 2007. And it was the... It was the points, wasn't it? It was a faulty set of points. And that was a grey rig in Cymru. It was actually the lamb rig points, but they call it grey rig. And that was 390 City of Glasgow, wasn't it? Is that 033? And there was one fatality from that. It didn't actually happen on the train, but I think it was from injury sustained on the train. It wasn't a young lady either, bless her. It was, it was quite it was sad. And that set was actually written off. I don't know if the whole thing was written off. But I know the fire service got some to test with and um, there's a few bits and pieces of it scattered about. But that sort of brings me back to the windows. RAIB commented how well the body shell stood up to it and they proportioned some of that to the fact that the windows are small and the rollover strength of the train is actually really, really good. Uh, the one I meant in October 2004 was the Liverpool Lime Street buffer stop collision. Um, there was actually two in a short space of time. I think it was like literally like a few weeks apart. And what they found was that if the, the WSP stuff were basically there was a glitch in the software with the WSP, and if the friction brakes were inhibited at low speed if there'd been a long coasting period, such as carrying on the approach to the station of Liverpool Street, uh, no, Liverpool Street, Liverpool Lime Street. So if you were coasting for ages and then put the brake on, your friction brakes because of a software glitch weren't coming on. So they, they, they all got limited to 110. New regulations came to force about putting the brakes on, running brake tests on coasting sections. Um, but yeah, they were limited to 110 for only a short period. They did the modifications to the software. Bing bang bosh. It was all fine. Is that a yellow? Yep. been looped. What's my head code? Surely I am a... I don't have the head code. something ahead of me being looped and I'm just going to be stuck at red at this junction. It's, um, it is a red. Mm. 
and that's a green. There was something ahead of me. Oh, that's irritating. I'm actually making half decent time at the moment. Yeah, it was this train here being looped. This is the Freightliner one. This was supposed to have a Freightliner. Loco on the front, but I swapped it out for, no, it's not, it's the DRS one. DRS 66. This is us actually climbing up over Shap at the minute. And there's a, I don't know if this is strictly true, there's a very good video on Facebook, on YouTube, of the an old driver of the ATPP talking about how the different systems that are in the, the ATP and that it could pull up Shap from a stand and keep going. And he's talking about in the steam days, he was a steam driver originally. And he said that the reason that the summit is 80 miles an hour is that they don't, the trains don't actually slightly jump. Now again, I'm not sure how true that is. And there's a lot of uh, old boys out there that, that have got a tail or two. And you'll see the fault of the speed set now, so it's not too bad on uphill gradients, downhill it is pants. So that's us at the summit. I'm just going to take the power off here and let us glide down because we will soon speed up to 105.
he says, with his fingers crossed. Accelerates pretty fast downhill. <laughs> Gotta love it. It is a shame. The more I sort of drive this thing, the more I get to use this route at high speed and see what's going on. I mean, I'm quite happy on this route, trundling along on a freight train. Um, all sorts. But going up and down at it. Actually, do you know what? This speed set's holding a relatively good speed, if I'm honest. To turn it off, let's get up to 105 and just have to slow down again anyway. It's only five mile now. Yeah, it's holding it quite well. Wonder if it's been patched at some point. No, 106. There we go. see that I was trying to work out how good the speed set will actually hold it's a bit of an unfair test isn't it really coming down the side of the side of Shap but um Give it a go. You know me. Anything for a little bit of lazy driving. Very pretty route, really. It always reminds me of Henry's Forest from Thomas the Tank.
Is that even a whole missing carriage? Looks like it is. I have no idea what's caused that, nor have I ever seen it before. I'm sure it will just be a train sim bug of some kind. Oh! And we're back. Stretchy! So this is my other video of the 380 brakes made of cheese. This has couplings made of elastic bands. I wonder if that's to do with... Something's going on there, it's sort of rattling behind me. <clears throat> We're stopping down at Penrith, we can... sort out what's going on. I mean, it hasn't disconnected. Is this a, a train sim bug on the Pendolino that I don't know about? seem to be missing some bridges. So I'm just frantically searching to see if that is actually a bug. Ah, we'll stick it in the repair book. Right. I can't even uncouple it. Because it's a fixed formation set. Well, what was that? That was the Euro Cargo Row. This is our DP Simulations. No, is it an R Fletcher one? I'm not sure. It's very nice. Right, okay. We're going to carry on our journey. I'm not going to end it there because we've only got sort of 17 miles to Carlisle. What I'm going to do though is watch this pulling away.
Let's um, try stopping it now. No, that doesn't work either. Okay then. See guys, this is why we love Train Simulator. Let's just pretend that never happened. I suppose it does just reinforce that we do need a bit of an upgrade on the 390. If it is the 390 that's causing this, it could be something else. <coughs> I'd like this to be something else, mine, but it could be. Oh, we're speeding. Have they stopped now? That's that's going to break something because I'm going to be in two signal sections at once soon. for this video would be like half semi sensible and decent Ah oh, can I really upload this happens if I do this? So I've just dumped all the brakes. It's dumped the brakes as well. Regen on. All right, then, guys. Um, my my train's a failure. The really annoying thing is. <laughs> <laughs> the other video I've got going up has an in-service failure as well. Um, so it'll be two fail videos in one go. So I don't know when you'll get this. I might whack it up for a laugh today. All right, and guys, thanks ever so much for watching. Please feel free to like, share, and subscribe. And do not forget my Facebook page. Link's in the description below. Hop on over there. Good railway chats, general railway tracks, as well as train simulator stuff. It's also the best way to keep up with what's going on with me and how things are progressing with the Twitch side of things and Patreon and a few other bits and pieces. So feel free to pop on over there and have a look, and I'll catch you soon. Oh, by the way, if any of you do know how to fix this, let me know. <laughs>